On November 14th, Renren Inc. announced that it would sell all of its Renren.com social networking assets to Beijing Infinities Technology, a holding company, for $20 million in cash and $40 million worth of stock. This triggered a wave of intense nostalgia on the Chinese interwebs because Renren, even today, is probably the closest Chinese analog to Facebook, which is still banned in China. You might have heard of this company before because if you're a longtime Tech Buzz listener, our episode on Mei Tuan covered its origin story briefly. This was Wang Xing's first attempt at cloning a U.S. internet business, and copying Facebook was exactly what he was going after, down to the pixel. And if you go back to the press releases around Yuanren's IPO, which was in May of 2011, that was exactly what Wall Street and everyone else thought of it as well. In fact, when it successfully IPO'd on the NYSE, it was said to bode well for Facebook. Reuters' coverage, for example, called it Ren Ren's big day, a prelude to Facebook IPO. And yet, the company that was once worth north of nine billion dollars is today just barely hovering above a hundred million dollars in market cap. Once a high flyer in the Chinese internet space, CEO Zhou Chen is now known as the head of one of the "quote unquote" biggest train wrecks in China tech. Yeah, at one point, Renren was the third largest listed Chinese tech company, behind just Tencent and Baidu. Alibaba, if you'll remember, didn't list until a few years later. In today's episode, we will talk about what happened to Renren, and what can we learn from this disaster, if anything. President's key economic team goes to China.、Uh, after a whole night thinking, I say I still want to do it. Hi, everyone. We are Tech Buzz China by Pan Daily, powered by the Sinica Podcast Network. We are weekly podcasts focused on giving you a peek into what's buzzing within the tech community in China. We uncover and contextualize unique insights, perspectives, and takeaways on headline tech news that don't always make it into English language coverage, so that you can be smarter about the world of China tech. Tech Buzz China is a part of PanDaily dot com, an English language site that tells you everything about China's innovation. And I am one of your two co-hosts, Ray Ma. And I'm your other co-host, Ying Ying Lu. Thanks, by the way, to those of you who watched and liked our promo video that Pan Daily put out this week. I had a lot of fun recording it back in New York at the SubChina offices. Speaking of which, we'd like to give a shout out to our partners, Deal Street Asia and SubChina, creator of the Sinica Podcast Network. In addition to Tech Buzz, you can also find the Sinica Podcast, which is a weekly discussion of current affairs on China. You can also find New Voices, a podcast on women, as well as the new business-oriented China Econ Talk, and of course the Caixin Sinica Business Brief from China's leading business magazine. Be sure to check these out. And oh yeah, if you enjoy listening to us, please take the time to leave us a rating or review on iTunes, Facebook, or wherever you get your podcast. Okay, I understand that except for longtime China watchers or investors, Renren is probably not something you guys have heard of, and that's pretty natural because it's been dead for a pretty long time. Well, not completely dead, but pretty dead, don't you think, Yingying? Right, I agree. Let's start from the beginning, as we always do. Ray, could you tell our listeners a bit more about Renren's founder, Zhou Chen? Sure, Zhou Chen or Chen Yizhou is from the province of Hubei. He moved to Delaware in his twenties to pursue an undergraduate degree at the University of Delaware. Given how difficult it was to leave the country at the time, it would seem that he must have been a really good student. Actually, almost certainly so, because he then went on to a master's program at MIT and subsequently received an MBA from Stanford. Fellow Hubei entrepreneur Zhou Hongyi, the founder of Qihu, has always said that Zhou is the smartest Hubei person he knows, even ahead of Lei Jun of Xiaomi. Stanford changed Zhou's life, or at least that's been the story. 
His first startup was with two Chinese classmates at Stanford, including Nick Yang, and it was a company that focused on student communities called China Ren. Ren being the Chinese word for people. Founded in 1999, that site quickly became the largest community for Chinese people online globally, and it was acquired by Sohu for about 30 million dollars in stock just a year later. Joe stayed at Sohu for a bit as VP, but quickly moved on to start another company, Oak Pacific Interactive, or OPI, in 2002. OPI was apparently a nod to the plentiful oak trees on Stanford's campus, and maybe Joe learned something during the dot-com bubble and subsequent bust because what he decided was that he wasn't going to focus only on making products anymore; he was going to acquire them. One of his first acquisitions was Mop dot com, a Reddit-like forum back in two thousand four. But the most important asset he acquired, for what I've been told, was next to nothing, was Wang Xing's Xiao Nei, a Facebook clone. The site's name meant on campus, and it was targeted at students. Wang Xing, if you'll remember, is today the CEO of Meituan Dianping, and this fire sale back in the day is now viewed as one of his early losses. Right. Xiaonei was founded in December of 2005, and OPI, seeing its early success, also launched its own student-focused social network in April 2006. One of the few products it ended up creating. Just a few months later, Wang Xing ran out of funding and was forced to sell his company. It clearly wasn't a happy collaboration because he stayed only eight months before leaving to start yet another social network. One we won't go into more detail here. Anyway, the new site created by the merger of OPI and Xiaonei was renamed Renren in July 2009, when it simultaneously opened its platform to users outside of college campuses. Now, Renren, as you've probably guessed by now, means people, people, or simply everyone. In 2011, Renren went public on the NYSE. I played a small role in the IPO, as my firm at the time was one of many investment banks who advised on the public offering. I mean, it was a successful IPO. Imagine raising over eight hundred million dollars for a company that built a total of only one hundred eighteen million in net revenues in that year, mostly, by the way, from the Renren asset. By two thousand sixteen, however. Total revenues had dropped by half to just sixty-three million, and Renren accounted for just over half of that amount, which means that actually the Renren business on its own had degraded by over seventy percent. The loss of revenues is reflected in the corresponding loss of users. While Renren reported that it had two hundred fifty-seven million activated users as of December two thousand seventeen, notice that those are activated, aka registered users, not active users. For monthly active users, now that number has long been lower than fifty million, and it slipped to barely thirty-one million as of March of this year. Thirty-one million might sound like a lot. But it's actually nothing in a nation of 1.5 billion people, especially when WeChat, for example, can get to 1 billion MAU, and so many others today are at hundreds of millions of active users. It's so few, actually, that when Joe Chen announced that Renren had been sold in a post on Renren.com itself. The post only had about 800 views after 12 hours, and it wasn't until other news outlets picked it up that it became a trending news item. I couldn't log on because I couldn't retrieve my old account anymore, so I couldn't see the original post. But Joe must have had some special privileges because I read that if you log on to Reddit today, you would not be able to upload a status update. All you can do is upload a short video or live stream something. In fact, the homepage that used to look eerily similar to Facebook, gone. The first page you see now is basically one that bombards you with the live streams, mostly of young girls who are performing in front of their webcams in the hopes of getting virtual gifts from their fans. But let's go back in time to the beginning of the end of Renren, which is when it was still super popular with students, as Facebook had been, but was struggling to spread to other age groups. 
Now, that was right around when I got into social games and was actually doing okay, but ultimately lost the market because it tried to be a little too clever for its own good. I'm talking about a specific incident, Zhen Jia Kai Xin Wang, or who is the real Kai Xin Wang? That was the IP dispute that rocked China internet in 2009. The story goes like this. In 2008, a Sina engineer named Cheng Binghao left to create his own social network, Kaixin Wang, which literally means Happy Web. It was a social network like any other, and it had the URL kaixin001.com. We're telling you the URL here because it's important. Unlike the mostly student demographic of Ren Ren, Kaixin from the get-go went after white-collar office workers, and their strategy worked because after a year. The site had 70 million users, which is a lot for that time. It was super popular. Everyone in my office had an account, and I naturally did too. However, its rise did not go unnoticed by Joe, who then bought the domain kaixin.com. So without the 001 tacked on at the end, and he launched an identical social network, also aimed at, of course, the white collar professional. In fact. If you looked at English articles from that period, Kaixin Wang would be referred to not as Kaixin or Kaixin Wang, but as Kaixin zero zero one in articles. While it's argued that it was not Kaixin Wang's own original ideas to integrate games and other third-party apps into its site, anyways, it was a copycat itself, copying from Facebook as others were doing. But in this instance, Zhou Chen went one step too far. He might have gotten away with launching another social network, but to take an existing brand and just shave off a portion of the URL and launch an identical product—that was too much. It was indeed really confusing when that happened. Like many others, I thought they were the same company. I thought maybe the owners of Kaixin Wang were making money and so bought a shorter domain or something. Cheng Binghao sued for abusive business practices. However, the case wasn't settled for a year and a half. When the decision was finally delivered, the courts ruled in his favor and forbid Zhou Chen from using the name Kai Xin Wang, and also asked him to pay a fine of about sixty thousand U.S. dollars. However, that's no doubt a fraction of a percent of the economic harm that he had inflicted. Recently, Cheng was again in the news for responding to Joe's comments that Kai Xin Wang would have failed anyway, because Tencent's QQ got into the social gaming frenzy, and Sina Weibo also launched, taking with it a lot of the target demographic of white collar workers. Yes, if you'll believe it, before WeChat was around, at one point, people would ask you not for your phone number anymore, but for your Weibo account. Which is like meeting someone and immediately asking them for their Twitter. But the other very real pain for both Zhen Ren and Kai Xin Wang was the loss of their social games to Tencent. Do you guys remember Farmville? Well, that game was actually copied from a Chinese game called Happy Farm, which was made by a Shanghainese gaming company called Wu Fenzhong. Literally five minutes. Jeez, this story is full of copycats. Happy Farm was ridiculously popular. Everyone in my office was growing virtual vegetables and trying to steal other people's. People spent hours per day on this thing, like more than five hours. However, the game itself was not actually owned by Ren Ren. It was, in fact, just a third-party application. So when Five Minutes decided to sell away its rights to Happy Farm to Tencent, that was the end of Five Minutes and a huge blow to Ren Ren. Honestly, I still don't understand why Five Minutes did that, given that they were sitting on top of a gold mine. But I remember meeting with the team for investment purposes, and I think it was just a very young team, mostly just out of college. And they were simply overwhelmed with the operations required to keep running a game that had tens of millions of users. That's a lot for back then. I think they just wanted to make games, but still, instead of dying, they could have been China's Zenga. Ren Ren and Kai Xin Wang did have some other hits, like the game Parking Wars, which was a clone. But that's precisely the point, right? Social games are so easy to copy, and what's really important is having the user traffic. 
I mean, Tencent did pay for Happy Farm, but I don't think they did for much else. They just began cranking out their own versions of popular games. It's a volume business, and after QQ got into the fight, Zhou and Cheng Binghao never had a chance. So neither Cheng nor Zhou won. But given that Kai Xin Wang was at least eventually sold for about a hundred and forty million dollars, far from what it might have fed should it have succeeded, that's still higher than Ren Ren's current market cap. Oh, but Zhou apparently never forgot about the Kai Xin dot com domain, which, by the way, the court still allowed him to keep. Because that is now the site of Ren Ren Group's other business, besides the old Ren Ren dot com social network slash live stream site. That is. Yup, Kaixin dot com is Ren Ren Group's secondhand car sales business, which is basically a dealership plus a financing business. By two thousand seventeen, seventy five percent of Ren Ren Group's revenues was coming from used car sales and financing, and actually nearly sixty percent of it was just the used car sales portion. Can you guys imagine? This is a formerly multi-billion-dollar social network, and it's now primarily selling used cars. No wonder people mock it as the greatest train wreck of Chinese internet. By Q2 of this year, Renren.com business made up just nine percent of Renren Group's overall revenues. How did that happen? Well, Joe launched many products after Renren.com, but none of them were any good, except for maybe this Kaixin Auto business. What is true, though, is that even after the dispute with Kai Xing Wang, Zhou never stopped copying. You want a standalone messaging app like WeChat? Ren Ren made one. How about a beautifying selfie app like Meitu? Yep. A user-generated, content-driven travel site like Ma Feng Wo that we talked about back in episode twenty-seven. Yes, again. Most of those were made and failed without so much as a splash. In the years of 2012 to 14, which is why you probably have never heard of them, because we certainly haven't either. But has Ren Ren stopped trying to bandwagon onto the latest hot trend? No. When P2P finance was all the rage, Ren Ren had a product. How about blockchain? Joe announced an ICO project called Ren Ren Coin to much fanfare at the beginning of this year, driving the stock price up 14 percent, but then only to get in trouble with the authorities by the end of the week and having to halt the project. He did, however, raise a hundred million dollars in three days, but that was still a dumb idea. Yeah, it was really dumb because he had to give it all back. The Chinese government has made it clear from the beginning that blockchains are welcome, but anything resembling coins or securities are not. Anyway, Joe and Co are either terrible product managers or just have terrible luck. But I think after eight years of literally zero hits, though, we can safely say it's probably the former. All is not totally lost, though. Joe has had more success with his investments. He made a big push into fintech when it was hot, investing into SoFi and Lending Home, and owning about thirteen percent of each at the beginning of this year. Actually, Ren Ren Group was so successful as an investment company, having invested into forty-four companies and six funds, that it was supposedly in danger of triggering some sort of NYSE rules that would have made it become well. An investment company. In order to avoid that happening, in April the company decided to spin off its investments into an entity called Oak Pacific Investments, reducing its number of outstanding shares by seventy nine percent. Investors, however, were not happy, and complaints were filed. These were the most valuable parts of Ren Ren Group, after all. And what's left is well. A dead social network, a used car business, a real estate website, and some SaaS businesses in the U.S. Well, and now that dead social network, Renren dot com business, is gone as well. As for Joe, he will still have a grasp on Renren, but a few layers removed. For one, he is one of the main owners of Oak Pacific Group. Which in turn is a minority shareholder in Infinity's technology, the company that bought Renren dot com. Maybe he too is nostalgic for the past and doesn't want to let go just yet, because I can't see this company coming back from the dead. Me neither. Well, what did we learn today, Ray? 
We learned that although at one point Ren Ren was worth over nine billion dollars on the NYSE, it was always a copycat and never really invested in truly innovative things. It was a follower and tried to capitalize on every major new trend, from live streaming to P to P, even to blockchain, and now has found a tiny bit of success in secondhand cars. But due to the lack of a strong product management team, it has unfortunately mostly failed. We also learned that its lack of product innovation is really due to the lack of vision of the founder Zhou Chen, who, despite being an entrepreneur once upon a time, now fancies himself as an investor. And while he has made some successful investments, such as in SoFi, those paper gains were probably not enough to offset the market's lack of confidence in the management's ability to lead its core business. Finally, we learned that even once great, okay, maybe not great, but at least popular, internet products can die. I mean, Tencent was once mentioned in the same breath as Facebook, but look at where it is now. In China earlier this year, people logged onto Renren because there was a viral challenge, asking, "What were you like at 18?" Who knows? Maybe that will be the only reason I log on to Facebook.com one day to retrieve a decades-old photo. That's scary, but it could happen, or maybe not, because as many people have already pointed out, Renren shouldn't ever have been called the Facebook of China. It was really more of a MySpace. Okay, that's all for this week, folks. Thanks for listening. We really enjoyed putting this together, and of course, we're always open to any comments or suggestions. You can find us on Twitter at the Pan Daily at Tech Bus China, and my personal Twitter account is spelled G I N Y G I N Y. And my Twitter is spelled R U I M A. We won't be back next week because it's Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to everyone. But we will be back the week after. Tech Bus China by Pan Daily is powered by the Seneca Podcast Network. PanDaily dot com is an English language site that tells you everything about China's innovation. Our producers are Shaw Wan and Kaiser Guo. Our intern is Wang Wenlu. Wang